Hi, it's uh, Dr. Clark here again. I've had a request to uh, do a quick tutorial just to show how to compensate for lag times in uh, data recording. Um, obviously, we uh, often record complex data from many different um, bits of equipment and many different applications, and quite often you'll find that uh, you get a lag between various measurements uh, simply because some of the systems take longer to do their measurements than others. So uh, on the screen here we have a quick example of this. We have a, a flow reading at the top taken from um, the spirometry module as part of a power lab setup. Uh, underneath here we have two channels from a Servomex. The CO2 uh, reading in green and in pink we have the uh, O2 reading. Of course the Servomex uses two different methods for measuring CO2 and O2 which probably have different uh, damaged tubes uh, as well as a different um, electrochemical or magnetic uh, sensor system and uh, they, they run at different speeds so you end up with a slight lag between them. And if we uh, concentrate here on the zoomed in view we've got in front of us we can see this lag. If I um, hold my mouse cursor over where I believe the end of respiration is which is here the point of cessation of flow, you can see that the O2 is uh, pretty much on the nose for end tidal. Uh, you can see it's pretty close to the uh, the end of the of the end tidal measurement. But the CO2, you can see, seems to have uh, uh, preempted this, and we've got a we've got a reading which is slightly uh, in advance of our of our end tidal. So what we may want to do is we may want to shift this CO2 uh, forward or in fact shift the O2 backwards which is far more applicable uh, because the CO2 couldn't have possibly preempted the end tidal it's clearly uh, doing it in real time uh, whereas the O2 has a slight lag so what we're going to do is we're going to shift the O2 channel to the left so it lines up nicely with the CO2 channel so that any measurements you're taking you can align uh, temporally rather than just having them as a as a reading on the screen so if I place my cursor where I believe the end tidal measurement should be taken, which is this point here. I'm going to add a marker just for the sake of doing the analysis. I'm going to add a comment and I'm going to call it just ET. Uh, and there we are, we've got ET added. So now if I select this area of data and I zoom in with the zoom window, we've now got this point ET. And using the little marker tool that we've used for other um, measurements, I can then work out what the difference between this point ET, which I'm happy about being the end tidal, to, this, to the similar point on the O2. So I can drop my marker right there, and then I can hold my mouse to a point where I believe my end tidal measurement actually would be in the, uh, in the purple trace here, and here we are, it's about the similar point about there. And if I look up above in the T equals, you can see at the top there it says T equals delta 0.254 seconds. So the lag time for this measurement is 254 milliseconds. So I make a mental note of 254 milliseconds. I use the drop down window of the O2 and I choose the word shift. I then type in minus 0.254 seconds and press go. And you can see immediately on the screen it has shifted the O2 in line now with the CO2. I click on this zoom view now and you can see now they're perfectly lined up. Everything is exactly as we expect it to be and now we can carry on our analysis uh, knowing that our, our respiratory gases are nicely aligned. Okay, that's it.